So uh, I had actually uh, two things that I wanted to share today. Um, at their school, we're, we're sort of really fortunate to have an amazing IT department, <coughs> which, um, which goes out of their way to sort of really be helpful. Um, in fact, once or twice a week, they do this thing where they, they set up in a table in a, in a public space where everybody walks by, and it says, their IT desk, ask a question, get a cookie. So they always bring this, these nice kind of some kind of cookies, and you, if you ask a question, you get a cookie. And so they're just, they're really amazing. So actually, both of these things I'm going to show you, uh, they really sort of helped sort of set up. So the first I'd like to show is a, a lecture capture system that um, <coughs> they set up for us that makes it really easy to capture video of a speaker along with their slides and the audio. And normally that's really complicated. You can just get the audio or you can post the slides. But <coughs> especially in cases where, um, um, where you're using a lot of multimedia, like why bother? You know? um, I think in cases where you use a lot of um, multimedia and, and, and there's a lot of material, <coughs> you know, students really like the ability to be able to go back and review it again. Um, and as Yogi Berra says, you can learn a lot by watching. And those of you who are fans of Malcolm Gladwell and the sort of blink concept that you pick up a lot uh, simply by watching. So <coughs> um, I, I'd just like to show you one example from um, a, a class where we use this a lot called Engineering 5, which is uh, healthcare technology, healthcare and biotechnology in the 21st century. Um, and there are a lot of amazing talks, some of which um, uh, you know, could have sort of value beyond just uh, the classroom setting. If you think about TED, for example, everybody know TED Talks, T-E-D? Um, so uh, let me just get out of this for a second. I'll show you a quick example. This was, um, this one was a um, talk last spring by uh, David Roberts, who is uh, chairman of neurosurgery at Dartmouth. Um, and every year he comes to talk to this class and has an amazing sort of update on the current state of neurosurgery. And um, so this is his, I'll just, I'll just play a few little clips just so you get a little sense of what, of what this is about. So here, and then, then it, you know, he showed a, a lot of examples of data. Here's a, here's a Parkinson's patient case. So, so this, this is an example of a lecture that's full of a lot of video. Uh, there's also a lot of um, medical imaging slide data showing how they co-register things in the OR. A lot of complexity, which, which is kind of wonderful to be able to watch more than once because it goes by pretty quickly for students. Um, and, and the video capture is a really uh, you know, wonderful way to uh, uh, be able to uh, maintain that. Um, get back on. So. So what does this thing do? It does simultaneous capture of the LCD projector, like this, and the speaker video. It has automatic picture-in-picture -picture formatting, like you saw of the slide and the, and the lecturer. 
There's no post-processing required. You don't have to have people work in a dark room. And it, feed, it can be fed directly to a quick, quick time streaming server so that you don't even have to sort of, you know, take a hard drive and go plug it in and download it somewhere. So it's really an elegantly simple system. Um, and uh, Jared Bennett, the, <coughs> the whiz at there who dreamed this up, nicely put together this, um, this slide that sort of shows the pictures. So it's really a, a video camera plugged into a, uh, a Mac laptop. The video, uh, the presenter is plugged into this one purchase thing called uh, the, uh, the, the uh, special frame grabber. Um, and then it saves it to, to the a hard disk on the computer and streams out to the to this server. So we have uh, TAs that simply set this up. It takes 10 minutes before class. They make sure everything's working, and it just works. Um, and then it's available for students to go and kind of review. That. The lecture we just saw from Dave Roberts was simply from Blackboard. You just, you just click on you know, the site on Blackboard, and it streams to the video, and it's painless. It just works. Um, and it's actually not expensive. This is the sort of list of parts that you need. So, you know, $2,200 to $4,400. So it's a pretty modest kind of cost. So if, if, if folks are interested in sharing this, I'm sure that the folks at there would be glad to help with that. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about was um, a project we did last year. Um, I was involved in a course called Sustainable Design. <coughs> it's a collaboration between um, an environmental scientist a designer, myself, and an architect, Carol Kawiaka. And we, we asked the students to do this daunting task of designing a sustainable community in Lebanon. And it was for a real project, like a 500-acre site um, in the area behind, um, behind the co-op, on you know, the crest of the hill. Um, they had to figure out what the needs of the community were so they could meet them. Uh, the goal was net zero energy, figure out a way to, to, to produce all the energy you needed on site. Um, and there could be no additional traffic on Route 120. Okay, so, so some of the, this no additional traffic on Route 120 was, came from the Lebanon Planning Board that has told the, the project that's eventually going to be built there that that's part of the thing. They have to provide enough public transportation to deal with that. So Given all of the material the students had to deal with, we chose to use a wiki for this. And as a class, they, um, they did general research by topic, which they then posted on the wiki. I'll show you examples. And then, they, then the students worked in small groups where they did their own proposals for this community. And they also used the wiki to kind of to collect and share a lot of that information. So here is uh, here's an example of the page from the wiki. Um, Go to this. So here's the here's the website for the the wiki site for this. Um, so for example, they did um, you know they they picked topics on on site analysis um, and each individual student kind of worked on aspects of that. So for example, I'll just pick a few here. Here's climate data. Um, and, you know, all this stuff is posted so that not everybody has to go find climate data. Some, you know, they can just go here and this is the insulation, uh, average temperature data, et cetera, for this, for this area. Um, they did things like um, they had to go photograph the site. So they collected, you know, they collected their photos from various from various areas, so not everybody had to tromp and go everywhere. Um, here's an example of um, researching possible energy technologies to use for this. So here's uh, issues about photovoltaic cells, thermals, uh, panels, um, geothermal wells and so forth. So, so you, get, you get the idea that they were able to aggregate their research so that everyone could share when they finally got to the point where they were actually designing their own communities. And then um, here are examples. And, and then, um, then they get to the point where they are uh, designing their own work. And here is an example of one of the teams um, and all of their uh, presentations and pages are 
are listed here. Um, I'll just pick one for example. Here's, um, here was an assignment, uh, a deliverable to do what's called a lead analysis. Leads is the, the method of measuring, uh, you know, the sort of greenness of a project. Um, and there's a <coughs> pretty elaborate sort of methodology for how you actually do the scoring. So this is their version of that. So the faculty in this case, in terms of evaluating the group's work, could easily go there and review all these things. Plus, the other nice thing is that, you know, one of the problems with group work is, is the slacker, right? And who really do, did what? And the great thing about a wiki is it's, it keeps track of who did what. So, um, you know, so the stars, you know, you can clearly pull out and the slackers you can too. So it's pretty easy to track who does what. So it, for this project, it was really a wonderful way to do it. It kind of saved a lot of, um, a lot of work and made it really a nice, rich thing to do. The questions, yeah. Is there a reason why you um, um, set the wiki up this way rather than a blackboard? Um, I think l last year, as I recall, Blackboard's wiki wasn't as robust. sort of robust. Yeah. So the Thera folks sort of set it up for us. But I think the Blackboard one now is, is great. Um, but I, th I thought it was really a good, nice example of complex collaboration. Do you have any trouble with orphan pages? Of what? Orphan pages? Yeah, a student or, or, or a group, small, small group of students, creates a page and it has no link from the home page. No, I don't think that, that never happened. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? And the video capture thing also is really, is really wonderful. I, I, I remember um, Tom had arranged some other sessions where they tried to figure out how to do that because other people had an interest. Um, this is really very elegant and it just works. Just fantastic. So. Yes? Yeah, I thought your last comment about the slack is did the wiki's motivated students to work more, not to be slacking, in other words? I'm sorry, can you say The use of the wiki, did they motivate students to be more active? To be more active? Yeah, not to I, be I think it probably does in the sense that the, there is a track of their performance and their contribution. I think that's probably true. It, it, it certainly helped also kind of generate sort of a, a group spirit in the class that they were all kind of contributing to this body of knowledge they needed to do the work, which I think was really nice too. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you. <laughs>